I'm quite fond of a good vampire story. You know the ones. Nosferatu, Dracula, Interview with the Vampire, Blood Ties, The Lair. You get the picture. And there are plenty of video games that allow you to play as a vampire, to truly be one of the creatures of the night. And what better way to experience the vampire lifestyle than with The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion? Don't give me that look, I know there's plenty of games that are specifically built around a vampire storyline, but the option to play as a vampire in Oblivion is wildly overlooked and underrated, and is a hell of a lot better than the vampirism in Skyrim, which is just being a reskinned floaty werewolf. So join me on this epic adventure as we ask the question, what's it like to complete Oblivion as a vampire? Or, bitey bitey, nighty fighty. Meet Tess, pronounced with the lowercase t, an Imperial, born under the sign of the mage, in the Magic Boy class. We'll skip the preamble for Oblivion's main quest, you know the drill and if you don't, the game's been out for 16 years, go and play it. We've been broken out of prison, Emperor Jean-Luc Xavier has been killed, like what they do in London, as have all his heirs. With his dying breath he hands us the Amulet of Kings and tells us to save the world. Can't help but question his judgement, but hey ho. And now we're about to be unleashed on Cyrodiil. Oh boy, these poor, poor people. Now, full disclosure, we've been a bit lazy and put a cheat in that will hopefully give us vampirism upon sleeping in a bed. The first thing we're going to do when we get out of the sewer is kill these highwaymen across the river from the sewer exit, nick their stuff, and we're then, in order for the cheat to trigger the first stage of vampirism, we're going to take a nap. Or not. Hello? Who's there? Who the fuck is this dude? A conjurer. Disturb my kip, will you? Now that he's been dealt with, the bastard, we can see the cheat hasn't bloody worked. We're going to make our way to Memorial Cave, the closest vampire den to the starting area. Now that we've suitably annoyed the fanged tooth fuckers, hope that they manage to infect us with a little bit of the good old-fashioned vampirism. And it's worked! We've now got vampire disease. It takes three nights to trigger the first stage of vampirism, so we need to find somewhere indoors to sleep. Vampires are notoriously allergic to daylight, so sleeping in the open isn't the best idea. We'll head to the Merchant's Inn in the Imperial City and hope to find a bed for the night. I do have a bed available for 20 gold. 20 gold for one night? Robbing bastard. Do I look like my anemic ass is lined with diamonds? Bugger this for a game of soldiers. Luckily for us, they offer beds at the arena, and all it costs is putting your life at risk for the the entertainment of a bunch of bloodthirsty weirdos. Three nights of sleep and there we go. Stage 1 Vampirism. There are four stages of vampirism in Oblivion, each one giving buffs and debuffs to your character. Drinking the blood of NPCs will lessen the effects of vampirism and keep you looking almost normal. Abstaining from the red juice will strengthen your buffs but will make your character look like Grandad's ball bag. Needless to say, all four stages determine how much damage you take in daylight as well, with stage 1 taking no damage and stage 4 taking the most damage. As as we're at the arena, we might as well do a few fights. They'll give us some experience and money while we wait to reach stage 4 vampirism. And we've reached stage 2 vampirism. This is going well. Time for another fight. God, it's bright up there. Oh, it's still daytime. This was a mistake. Oh god, oh fuck, and we're dead. Bugger. To avoid something like that happening again, we're going to limit ourselves to fighting exclusively at night. As a vampire, you burn between 6am and 8pm, with the damage getting stronger and weaker as the day moves from morning to night. We're going to take full advantage of Bethesda's legendary prowess of leaving bugs and glitches in their games. Sorry, not bugs. Hidden features. All of this just works. You can only sign up to fight in the arena between 9am and 9pm. Any earlier or later and Blademaster Owen gets a bit tetchy. You might be ready, but the arena ain't. Matches take place between 9am and 9pm. Come back later, moron. We're going to sign up to fight at half past eight in the evening, just like one of those awkward bastard customers at a restaurant who comes in for food five minutes before the place closes oh, down. Hi there. You're not closed yet, are you? I'm not quite. Oh, terrific. We can still fight our bout against whatever this thing is. She's like a heavily armored wasp. Never mind a wasp in armor, she looks more like a bulldog chewing a wasp. And there was no question who was going to win that bout. A few more fights. Oh god, why does he look so sad? You earned it. We'll start this one at half past seven. The sunlight damage shouldn't be that bad. Never mind. So we've just hit level two and we're already halfway through the arena quest line. Victor from the blue team, leave the arena 
now and rest. You earn it. Next fight is a Nord. Shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, fuck. They sent out someone competent. Oh, God, my kidneys. She's a Nord. Very quick, very strong. Don't underestimate. After a quick trip into the shopping district, we'll head to the Merchant's Inn and treat ourselves to a comfy bed for the night. Pay this cheeky bastard 20 gold, get to bed, and we've reached vampirism level 3, and oh good god we are looking rough. Is everything alright? You look a bit ill. Back to the arena for another fight, a spellcaster this time, and down like a sack of spikes they go. Back to town, we'll treat ourselves to a night in the Tiber Septim, the Imperial City's finest inn. I do have a lovely room available for a mere 40 gold a night. Cheeky bitch, well the room had better be worth it. Hmm, single bed, mouldy walls, tatty cupboards, no windows, no toilet, not even a kettle and tea bags, bloody ripoff. And just like that we've reached the final vampire state, level 4, which means we can now scare the shit out of the locals, like this. Get back you filthy beast! I'll have nothing to do with the likes of you! Charges me 40 gold for a tatty room and then verbally abuses me when I come down for breakfast. Unbelievable. At least the fucking cops show me some respect. We're always on duty. <laughs> duty. Being a full vampire can cause problems when it comes to interacting with the NPCs, as we'll find out down the line. Back to the arena again and we catch some shit from the yellow team trainer. Warrior? You? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ignore her, she's just bitter because we've killed most of her friends. And we're finally ready to save Tamriel. Shit. Oh! Daylight. And now, we're finally ready to save Tamriel. Are you not feeling well? We're off to Wayne and Priory to see Joffrey, no not that little bastard, Joffrey the monk. After we scare the shit out of his fellow monks, you won't get any of my blood. Get away from me! We meet with Joffrey and give unto him the Amulet of Kings. Joffrey tasks us with finding Martin Septip, the Emperor's only surviving son. Bastard! Who is a priest in the city of Kavach and is blissfully unaware that he's now in charge of the Empire. He's in for a shock. Before we head to Kavach, we make a quick stop into Anvil and we join the Mages Guild. No, we're not here to learn spells, we're here to take all their shit. Food, scrolls, jewellery, alchemy equipment, this necklace. No copies of the Lusty Argonian made though, what a shame. It's a lonely old life being a vampire. Not even the local cats want to know you. You won't get any of my blood. Get away from me. Racist bastard. As we approach Kvatch, we're accosted by this panicked young man who tells us the city is on fire. Kvatch is a smoking ruin. We're all that's left. Do you understand me? Everyone else is dead! As we make our way into the besieged city, we get assaulted by gremlins and dinosaurs. Should have stayed extinct, kiddo. Into the chapel and here he is. Brother Martin. Son of the Emperor. Voiced by Sean Bean though, so don't get too attached to him. His characters are known to die. Yes. <laughs> Eddard Sharp tells us he can't leave until the rest of the survivors can safely leave the city. So it's down to us, the level 2 full-blown vampire who's allergic to sunlight, to save the city. So it's off to oblivion we go, and what an absolute shithole. No wonder Dagon wants to take over the mortal realm. I'd want to move home as well if I lived in this place. You can't even take a nice dip in the lava. Bollocks to this. We save one of the Kvatch guards, fight more dinosaurs, and make our way to the tower. Daedra do not like shock touch. This is good for us. Up to the top of the tower and... You should not be here, mortal! Gobby bastard. Kill him, free this dude, nick that, and we're done. Oh, need to wait for night first. Don't want the hero Kvatch burning to death two seconds after saving the city. We help the city guard cleanse the streets of Jurassic Park extras, and we head back to Lord Stark to tell him the good news. Get back, you filthy beast. I have nothing to do with the likes of you. Get away from me. Get away from me. Typical. Save the city, everyone still hates the vampire. Ungrateful swines. Now to take Martin back to Joffrey. Oh yes, we're not done, not even close. We'll need to get inside. Yeah, we're not coming back here. We head back to Wayne and Priory and... Help! You must help! They're killing everyone at Wayne on Priory. Yeah, I can see that. The Priory's been attacked and the Amulet of Kings has been stolen by the sinister Mythic Dawn cult. We get on our horses and travel to Cloud Ruler Temple, the home of the legendary blades and... It's crashed. It's dead. Thank you, Todd Howard. <coughs> Luckily, the autosave hasn't corrupted, so on we go! We drop Martin off and we get to listen to one of Sean Bean's rousing speeches. I know you all expect me to be Emperor. 
I'll do my best. But this is all new to me. Man who passes a sentence should swing the sword. The white walkers have been gone for thousands of years. The madman sees what he sees. I appreciate your welcome here. That's it. Thank you. Well then. We get made a member of the Blades, we get given a katana, and we liberate a suit of Blades armor while we're here. I've got to say, everybody here doesn't seem to give a tin toss that we're a vampire. Or at least if they do, they aren't showing it. Very nice. Joffrey tells us to head back to the Imperial City and meet with Boris, a fellow member of the Blades who can help us recover the Amulet of Kings. Boris asks for our assistance with this follow thing he's been trained for all his life, and we help him kill a mythic Dawn assassin. Oop, sorry mate. Ooh, what's this book? Boris pledges his assistance in helping us recover the Amulet of Kings. When we mention this strange book to him, he points us towards Tarmina, an Argonian scholar who's an expert on Daedric cults. Before we head to the Arcane University, we'll do a bit of shopping. We could do speechcraft to get better prices on items, but as we're a vampire, we can do one better. One of the perks of being a vampire is the Vampire Seduction spell, which increases our character's charm for 20 seconds. Touchy touchy, nicey nicey. Some people are still reluctant to serve a vampire, though. No! No! Get away from me! Stay away from me! We meet with Tarmina, who tells us about these Mythic Dawn commentary books and the leader of the cult, a high elf by the name of Mankey Cameron. She gives us volume two of the Mythic Dawn commentaries and directs us to Fintius, a collector of specialist books who may have the third volume. Hello, good sir. You won't get any of my blood. Get away from me! Ah, customer service at its finest. We'll just use a little vampire seduction on him to improve his mood. No, no, stay away from me! And that didn't work, but at least he's smiling now. All right, I've had it with you sanguirophobic bastards. Take this. Well, now he's just incapacitated and rude. No, no, stay away from me. Get back, you filthy beast. I have nothing to do with the likes of you. Bugger it, we'll just steal the bloody book. The fucking lock picking. Shit. Bollocks. Wanker. Bastard. Fuck's sake. Tits. The issue now is that we need to find out why Fintis had the book. But he won't talk to us because he's a massive racist. You won't get any of my blood! Get away from me! This is our first major hurdle so far. Oh good, the guards are here and oh, we're getting arrested. And they've managed to take the quest item off of us. Oh, bugger. Well, it seems we've managed to softlock ourselves. We need to have a conversation with Fintius in order for the next major event to trigger. And in order to do that, we've got only one option. Drink blood. That'll take us back to stage one vampirism, so we should be able to speak to the NPCs again. So we'll take a sneaky little stroll round the back of the arena where we'll hopefully find a few homeless people to drink from and why are you all awake? Okay, into the arena then. Hopefully take out some of the yellow team competition. Ah, Hundlin will do. <laughs> Refreshing. And we're looking slightly better. God, he's fucking ripped. Back to first editions. Ah, hello, good sir. Oh my god, you're just a grumpy bastard no matter how we look, aren't you? A little of the old vampire seduction should turn that frown upside down. I had a copy of volume three, but I am sorry to say that it was stolen recently. Oh no, somebody stole your book? Oh god, who would do such a thing? How awful. Gwyneth, eh? Sounds Welsh. Oh, there he is. Probably going to pick up the book we've stolen. Sorry, somebody's stolen. We'll head back to the arena in broad daylight, healing as we go. A few more fights should help pass the time and get us back to Vamp 4. One more match is all you need to advance again, up to gladiator rank. Ooh, we're a gladiator now. There does seem to be a bug when it comes to progressing through the vampire stages. On the wiki it says that you advance a stage of vampirism for every day you don't consume blood, but this is the second time we've been waiting almost a week to hit stage 4. I think it might be something to do with changing beds. Oh-ho! Look who's here! Gwyneth! No! No! Stay away from me! And he's not going to talk to us on account of us being a wrinkly bloodsucker. Let's see what it's got in its nasty little pocketses. Gah! What do you think you're doing? Filthy pickpocket! Keep your fingers to yourself, thief! Pickpocket! Pickpocket! God! What do you think you're doing? <gasps> it's all over, lawbreaker! Interesting stuff. Well, there's a definitive answer right there. We head back to Boris with our information about the mythic dawn, and he takes us into the sewers, which he knows suspiciously well. I know that part of the sewers well. To observe a meeting of the creepy cultist bastards. I think I'd better be the one to handle the meeting. You'll be my backup. 
No, Boris. We'll meet the sponsor. We're the main character. This is our story. So, you want to become one of the chosen of Mayroon's Dagon? Don't you come in here trying to sell me your hipster timeshare shite. How about you? Now that they're dead, we can take book four of the Mythic Dawn commentaries. We'll nick that ring as well. Boris heads back to Cloud Ruler Temple and leaves us to decipher the message in the Mythic Dawn books. I'm going to Cloud Ruler Temple. My place has been tied, Martin. We'll head back to the Arcane University to see Tarmina and... You won't get any of my blood. Get away from me. Wow. Nice to see you again as well. Get back, you filthy beast. I'll the Mysterium have Xarxes. Wonderful. You have a scholarly interest in Daedric cults, then. Guess we'll have to figure out the clues ourselves. Mid. Day. Sun. Oh, for fuck's sake. So as not to burn to death, we'll hang about in the Elder Council chambers until midday. And now... Blank <laughs> fuck. Now we need to head to Lake Arius Caverns to find the shrine, so we'll fast travel to Chaden Hall and make our way on horseback from there. We've got plenty of time until sunrise and the weather sounds absolutely abysmal. You'd think the Mythic Dawn would keep their super secret hideout a bit more secretive, not right next to a major city. In we go, we want that fucking amulet back. Ah, here's a creepy bastard. Hurry up, sunshine, let us into your eyes wide shut party already. You may have the honor to be initiated into the order by the master himself. Oh my god, you mean we get to meet Mankey Cameron? Now, we have an important choice to make here. Hand over all our gear and get initiated or... Mm, nah, we'll take the path of least resistance. We do look good in red though. Creepy bunch this lot, eh? At least they actually talk to us. How can I serve you, brother? Here he is, Mankey Cameron. Praise be to your brothers and sisters. Great shall be their reward in paradise. Hold on, I know that voice. That's that's Terence Stamp. No. Kneel before sword. Praise, Praise be. be. Well, he didn't hang about. We now need to make a sacrifice to prove our worth to Lord Dagon. Take up the dagger and offer Lord Dagon the sacrificial red drink. Now, a good person would refuse to make the sacrifice or release the prisoner. But as a vampire, we're partial to the old red drink, so we're going to do neither. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> Well done. You are now a member of the Order of the Mythic Dawn, one of the Chosen. Your life belongs to Lord Dagon. Seeing as Cameron's buggered off with the Amulet of Kings, we're going to be incredibly petty and nick his big book of bullshit in return. Yoink. Kill him! Oh god, they saw us. Let's get the hell out of here. That was a wrong turn. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh my god, where's the door? Where am I going? Everything looks the same. It's like getting lost in Ikea. Shit. The time of cleansing is at hand. Take two, let's find our gear first. This dude keeps following us about. What have you got on you? You cheeky shit. I assumed it would be in some kind of chest, but no, this guy's holding it all. Right, we're taking that back right now, you crispy fuck. And nobody noticed. You cannot you escape cannot the master's master's all right, they did notice. Run, run. Holy shit, run. Not again. Oh my god. And we still don't have the key. This is where another of our vampire powers comes into play. In addition to vampire seduction, we also have Embrace of Shadows, which allows us night vision for 90 seconds and invisibility for 180 seconds. This should hopefully give us enough time for these idiots to calm down. Then we can find the key and get out of here. It was at this point I nudged the mouse with my elbow and these psychotic bastards detected me. Fuck me, never mind. Third time lucky. Avoid the small room, head to the door. Where's the bloody key? Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a back door. I am incredibly embarrassed. And it's night as well, thank fuck for that. Oh shit, they're coming, let's get the hell out of here. We'll make our way to Cloud Ruler Temple to let the lads know the news and... <coughs> Fucking daylight. Upon scaring Martin with the book. By the nine, such a thing is dangerous even to handle. He's hopeful that it can lead us to Cameron. While Martin translates the Mysterium Xarxes, Joffrey wants us to look into possible spies at the temple. Whoops. Better change out of these robes. Don't want anybody having an episode. Good work tracking down the Mythic Dawn secret shrine. We finally took the fight to the enemy. 
Well, if by fight you mean killed an Argonian and nicked their book, then yes, we took the fight to them. Joffrey tells us there have been strangers seen on the roads around the temple at night. Ah, good. Night. He tells us to kill them and find out what they're doing. But these spies must be eliminated. Probably a better idea to find out what they're doing first. The people of Bruma are a mix of Imperials and Nords who crossed the border from Skyrim, and they all hate vampires. You won't get any of my blood! Get away from me! No! No! Stay away from me! Get back, you filthy beast! Hello, hello, hello. What are you not doing huddled in the corner like that? Not on my watch. Captain Bird will know for sure, though. You won't get any of my blood. Stay away from me! Fuck. Well, the next NPC the game wants us to speak to also won't if we're at vampire level 4. I'm starting to notice a pattern. No matter, we don't really need to speak to him. By using our super intellect, powers of deduction, and previous experience from years of playing Oblivion, we know what to do. Captain Stefan points us in the right direction. Real conspicuous with the armor, guys. Now we've dispatched them, we'll nick their shit and, ooh, a key to a mysterious basement. Let's go find out what this unlocks. Bugger, he wants us to go back to that bird dude. Sod that, we'll find the place ourselves. Here we go. We'll nick their stuff because they're dead and nobody really gives a shit. Obvious trap door is obvious. More of these crappy books and here we are. Fortunately for us, we found a scroll listing what the spy's orders were and the exact details of what the mythic dawn are trying to do. Convenient for us and absolutely damning for the cult security protocols. Excellent work. We give the scroll to Joffrey, who thanks us and lets us know that Martin has deciphered part of the Mysterium Xarxes. Martin tells us he needs a Daedric artifact to complete some bullshit ritual that'll let us into Mankey Cameron's garden. There are multiple Daedric artifacts that are obtainable through side quests in Oblivion. Azura's star, Wabajak. Collect them all! However, giving one of these Daedric items to Martin will destroy the item. Poof. Gone. Not coming back unless you cheat. The easiest one to get is the Skeleton Key, but that's one of the most useful items in the game because it's an unlimited lockpick. So we've got to find the one Daedric item that's easy to get and that's wholly expendable to us. We're going to go after Azura's Star. We're the right level, it's the easiest, the majority of it can be completed at night, and let's face it, we're never going to use fucking soul gems in this run. Conveniently, there's a book detailing the location of Azura's shrine on Martin's desk, and it's within spitting distance of Cloud Ruler Temple, so off we go. We'll just use vampire seduction on this guy to find out what we need to do, and uh, shit. Glow dust. I knew we'd forgotten something. You can get glow dust by killing ghosts, but we're just gonna go and buy the stuff. If you're wondering why we're not just waiting outside the shops for them to open, this is why. So we need to wait indoors until the shop is open. Oh no, this poor man's been robbed. Who would do such a thing? After buying the glow dust and some other odds and sods, we head back to Azura's shrine and offer it up. Oh god, we're burning. Hurry up with the prologue, darling, we're burning up here. By the foul creature. <laughs> Bugger. We'll try early morning instead. I ask a service, five followers slew the vampire Dratic, but all are infected by the foul creature. Oh, guess you're not a fan of vampires. Bring the peace of death to my followers. Well, this is going to be awkward. Azura wants us, a vampire, to go and kill some of her former acolytes, who were turned into vampires, for being vampires. Oy vey. Fucking conjurers again, they just turn up out of nowhere and try to smack the shit out of you. Of course, there's an oblivion gate right above our objective. Well, fuck that and fuck you as well, you little shit. Die. What's the matter getting tired? Holy hell, Flare is incredibly effective against these buggers. Unfortunately, it's also incredibly effective against us as well. And this green-skinned bastard can use it. They're using our own tactics against us. Unbelievable. Bloody hell, this guy's strong. Take me down. Ooh, a note. The vampire Dradic died by our hands, but the price was dear. We served Lady Azra. Bring these, our last words, to the her shrine. Our destinies were written in the stars, that our souls and reason be slain, and our world lost forever. It is only by fate that any life ends, and only by chance that it is mine, not yours. Oh, that's, that's actually quite touching. Is there a word for feeling both satisfied and guilty at the same time? Out of here and oh fucking hell, bloody Oblivion Gate's cocking about with the weather. Looks awful. We've also apparently taken an arrow to the chest at some point. Luckily, it's missed our heart. 
And with that, we return to Azura, who thanks us and gifts us with Azura's star. For your service, take this token. Which we immediately give to Martin to smash into bits. I figured out another item needed for the ritual. Wait a minute, you need more bullshit to get into Cameron's garden. The blood of a divine. Not asking for much, are you, Martin? You should talk to Joffrey. He needs your help. Trouble down in Broomer, I think. Oh, no, not Broomer. How awful. Of course, we managed to close one Oblivion Gate. We're clearly the expert. Captain Bird, that racist piece of shit. Since we had the Hero of Kavach available, I didn't think it made sense to try this on our own. Oh, so now you want to speak to us? Now that we're trying to save your city from Daedric bullshit? Our next objective is Sanka Tor to grab Tiber Septim's armor so we can scrape some ancient dried blood off of it for Martin. This place is creepy and full of skeletons. Our Akaviri Katana won't work on the ghostly enemies, but luckily we have our silver dagger on us. Cuts through these ethereal fucks like a hot knife through spooky butter. Fuck me, an actual ghost! At long last, you have freed me. Poor bastard. Looks like we've got some shrine cleaning to do while we're here then. Save all the former blades so that we can get to the armor. Sounds easy enough. One down so far. That's two. The ancient katanas seem to actually work against the ghosts, which is interesting. The easiest tactic to defeat them is one shot with electric touch and one slash with the sword. Give them the combo. Zap them, then whack them. One-two punch. Remember, the one-two punch. You go down easily enough. Valdemar makes three. Off comes his head and Elaine makes four. So it's back to the main chamber and with the help of the four dead blades, the curse of Sankator is lifted. And here it is. The armor of Tiber Septim himself. It's suspiciously light. Are we sure this isn't a knockoff? Here you are, Martin. Have this disgusting, blood-stained relic. The armor of Tiber Septim himself. All I need is a scraping of Talos's divine blood. The third item we need is a great welkin stone. Ah, a third item. This isn't turning into one massive fetch quest. No, not at all. We need a big old Wilkin stone from the Aeliad Ruin. A place where many have perished seeking its great stone. It is said that the ruins are still haunted by the vengeful spirit of its last king. Which is apparently haunted. We should start charging people for this. We're effectively Tamriel's solo ghostbuster. Miss Carcan looks nice from the outside, but it's full of zombies, goblins, skeletons, and hidden levers to open doors. As if the place wasn't confusing enough. God, I hate the alien cities. They make the dwarven ruins in Skyrim look like a walk in the park. The Welkin stones are enchantingly pretty. I think we'll take them home with us. A souvenir, if you will. Where's this bloody button? Ah, here it is. The Great Welkin Stone. We'll have that and... Oh, shit, who the hell is this guy? I think we'd better get out of here. He's slow, but I don't think we should stick around for tea. It's daylight. Shit. And we physically can't wait indoors. Great. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Here he comes. Bloody hell, he's strong. Time for plan B. We'll wait until night, get straight out of here, and find the closest city. Fucking lot picking. Shit. Tits. Fuck. Bastard. We can't fast travel, so we'll ride to Skingrad. We're going to get ourselves arrested, but for a bloody good reason. It's all over, lawbreaker. After paying our fine, we spawn outside the city and look who's here to greet us. The King of Miskarkand. Time to lure him inside the city and let the guards deal with his undead ass. <laughs> Give that man a promotion. Pride of the Skingrad City Watch. Are you not feeling well? Whoops! <laughs> Got caught playing with the corpses. <laughs> Heading back to Cloud Ruler Temple, we find Martin dressed in the armor of Isildur. I mean Isildur. I mean Isildur. I mean the armor of Tiber Septim, arguing with Joffrey. Boris looks happy to see us at least. We give the big shiny, probably priceless gem to Martin. Is that the end of our fetch questing? Now, we need only one more item. One more thing! But there is one more thing. Ah, one more thing.
Of course not. In the meantime, the Bruma Guard needs your help to close an Oblivion Gate. Didn't you already speak to Joffrey about that? Oh, buggery. We've got to go back and do that thing Joffrey asked us to do earlier. It's like having your dad remind you that your mum asked you to clean your room. Don't forget, Captain Bird needs your help. Off to Bruma then, to see Captain Bird. Ugh. Stay away from me. Hero of Kavach available. All right, in we go then. This poor bugger didn't even make it into Oblivion. Imagine how the rest of the strike force is going to manage. We could tell Captain Bird to wait by the exit gate, but sod that, vampires are known to hold grudges. As we make our way through this literal hellscape, we can reflect on the fact that we're lucky there's no sunlight or sun damage in here. I imagine this run would be more of an absolute shit show if there was. What great timing! Didn't get stabbed by either of them. We continue our epic journey through the Tower of Flipped Assets, slicing gremlins and dramora as we go. Oh, for God's sake. Fucking lockpicking. Shit. Bollocks. Come on, you fucking piece of... We should have got the bloody skeleton key. Nick the sigil stone, and that's that done. You closed the Oblivion Gate. I now know we can close these Hell Gates. I highly doubt it, Captain, and would you mind not standing on the bodies of your men? Have you helped Captain Bird and his men close the Oblivion Gate yet? Yes, Mum, we helped the local idiots. And I think Martin's been drawing on the floor in here. Joffrey asks us to visit all the civic leaders of Cyrodiil in order to gain aid for Bruma, as the city could be overwhelmed by Daedra. We need to gather what allies we can before Bruma is hopelessly besieged. We don't actually need to do this, so we won't. Back to Martin, who walks over his desk instead of around it. Okay. I've deciphered the final item for the ritual. Not another bloody fetch quest. Oh my god. You're not going to like it. Joffrey doesn't like it. The Countess of Bruma certainly isn't going to like it. Right. We need a great sigil stone. The only way to get one is by letting the mythic Dawnlands attack Bruma by opening a great oblivion gate outside the city. We know they're going to do it. They know they're going to do it. But we need to ask the Countess of Bruma to approve of the plan. She's not going to like this, is she? Martin would risk my whole city to gain a great sigil stone? Very well. Don't think I doubt you. I will order my men to stop closing the gates and prepare for battle. Oh, that was disgustingly easy. As I said earlier, we could get assistance for Bruma from the other cities around Cyrodiil, but as it's optional, we're just going in. Here's the gate, and here's our army. Good lads. Strong lads. All ten of them. All wearing leather armor against demons. That's a good plan. Probably not the sharpest tools in the shed, but who am I kidding? If they signed up for this, they're practically brain dead. Martin addresses the troops. The Empire will stand or fall by what we do here today. We let the Daedra do to Bruma what they did to Kavach. We let them burn our homes. We let them kill our families. We must hold fast until the hero of Kavach can destroy their great gate. Not quite King Thaed in speech before the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, but it'll do. Oh shit, that started quickly, and these dudes seem a wee bit stronger than before. Oh, this isn't going well. And I've only just noticed that ourselves and Martin are the only ones actually fighting. All the other buggers are just standing around with their thumbs up their asses. Oh dear god, Joffrey's dead. We're nearly dead. Bugger it, in we go. Right, we're in. We've got 15 minutes to close the gate. We're on our own. We've got no idea where we're going. The difficulty has risen substantially. We're fighting Daedra that used lots of fire spells, and we're severely allergic to fire. Cue the music, here are the highlights. So here we go, the final run through Oblivion of what has so far been a fantastic game. An absolutely flawless performance by test over the past few hours, of which the viewers will only see an hour or less. The siege engine there, far below, just waiting to tear the mortal realms into pieces, very frightening. Heading down the tower now at an incredible pace and out into the open. The scamps there, on form as usual, taking an absolute pasting. Test now turning out an unconventional tactic in order to get the job done within the allocated 15 minutes, stripping off his armour in order to get a much needed burst of speed and agility. Over the gap and back on with the armour, the clan fair only just getting a hit or two in. Test now resorting to invisibility to avoid the rest of the danger in this literal hellscape, but the towers can still see him. 
Night eyes worn off now, but invisibility still holds for a while longer as Test sneaks past the churls like a thief in the night, the sneaky bugger. Into another tower now, desperately trying to find the lever for the war gate. The Dramora has seen him, Test dropping him like a sack of shit. Go on lad, have him. Trying to find the lever now, Test trying to activate the very misleading set piece that could very well be the lever but isn't. There it is, and with the gate now open, Test absolutely leathers the United supporting churl, guarding the entrance. Into the world breaker now with the home stretch of this quest, dropping the sigil keeper like a sack of spuds. I'm telling you, you'd want this lad with you outside the pub on a Saturday night, absolutely. With these two buggers now, they're trying to start on him as the door opens far too slowly. Tess knocks back a couple of potions like their best bitter and puts these two United supporting Jessies on the floor where they belong. Up the tower now, avoiding the bloke in his dressing gown and another scamp, he knocks the sigil keeper down and nicks the key off him. What a legend. Up the tower, levels up, ignores the final United supporter and steals the sigil stone. What a fantastic performance. Truly one of football's greatest. What do you mean it's not football? Ha! That actually worked? How did that work? How did that work? The city is saved, but sadly, it came at a high cost. So many dead. Our friends Joffrey and Boris gave their lives to save Bruma. So sad. Such a tragic waste of human life. <coughs> oh, what? Oh, fuck. We're dead because of the bloody daylight. Where's the last save? Bottom of the tower. Oh, my God, why? After doing all that shit again, we emerge back into the daylight, where Martin tells us we're finally ready to take the fight to Mankey Cameron got to get indoors, otherwise we're going to burn to death and I forgot to save the game again. Run, drink, run, drink, run, strip, run, run, run. You're looking rather pale. Thank fuck. We go back to Cloud Ruler Temple, which is all the more lonelier now that we've lost Joffrey and Boris, and Martin's keeping his collection of random dangerous magical crap right in front of the fireplace, so that's nice. Time to stock up on health potions before we do this thing. And luckily for us, the alchemist in the Imperial City has no problem serving a vampire. You'll get a good Yelp review for that, belady. Martin opens up the portal for us, and quotes a Sean Bean meme in the process years before it actually came about. Brace yourself. And the winter is coming. Fucking hell, this isn't a portal, it's the bloody eye of Sauron. So here we are, paradise. And we're not burning in all this daylight. Brilliant. You didn't think you could take us unawares here of all places. Cameron speaks some shit to us, but we're not going to listen. Just reminds me of that bit from Halo 3 where Prophet of Truth threatens humanity. Behold the Savage Garden. Hey, Savage Garden, I love that band. As beautiful as this place looks, it's still full of Daedric bullshit. Scamps, clan fears, attacking random people. Ascended Immortal is fleeing. Oh boy, I knew there had to be a catch with this place. Who's this, the park keeper? You destroyed the Sigil Tower at Ganona. Oh my god, he actually speaks. My kin, say you fought well. Ah, so we apparently killed this guy's people at Kavach, but we earned his respect for fighting so well. I feel very conflicted right now. Let's see what he wants us to do. The rabble of the Savage Garden have imprisoned the Zivili Anaxes. And though the matter is too small for my attention, it is not too small for one of my servants. Free Zivili Anaxes. So, these half-naked, fleeing zealots managed to trap one of Cathetet's soldiers in a cave. Glad to see the Dramora have such a skilled army. Apparently, if we let the idiot out of the cave, he'll help us get out of here when the time comes. Sounds good. We can also do speechcraft on him, but I don't think it actually does much. He's trapped at the back of the cave. It took us weeks to prepare the trap. You must not release him. For pity's sake. Please, don't let Anaxes loose. Leave me in peace. After speaking to these three who beg us not to let Anaxes out from behind the rock, we let Anaxes out from behind the rock. How the hell did you let yourself get lured into this? It's like something from Looney Tunes. I'm surprised they're not a tunnel painted onto a wall somewhere. Catheter gives us the bands of the Chosen, which will allow us to leave the Savage Garden via the Forbidden Grotto. We'll just slap these on and... Oh, fuck me. 
50% weakness to fire. Alright, we'll just add that onto our existing weakness to fire from being a vampire and oh shit. 100% weakness to fire. Oh fuck me. Alright, here we go. Lord Dagon cannot invade Tamriel, his birthright. He comes to liberate the occupied land. Oh shut up Terence, I'm not interested. Well this place is just fantastic. We can even torture the poor buggers who are already down here. Oh great, who is this now? Wait, I know who you must be. You're the one who killed Raven and Rumor. Of course, you came for their father. I helped plan the Emperor's assassination. Ah, you're to blame for all this shit then, eh? No one wearing the bands of the Chosen can leave this grotto. I can remove them, but I will need time. The Dramora Overseer will be here any minute to check up on me. You need to play along until he leaves. Right, I'll stay my hand for now. Just got to go along with this interesting little plan. Prisoner, get in the cage. Quick dip down near the lava and out we go. Oh, bugger, here we go. We'll have that sword, thank you. Jesus, these two are strong, but they go down like all the rest of them. Let's get these bands off you. Let me come with you. Let me help you kill Mankar Kamari. And now, with the bands removed and Eldermill by our side, we head off through the caves to kill Mankar Cameron together. And he's fallen in the lava and he's dead. Great. But now he's back because immortality. Jesus, Eldermill is pretty handy in a fight. Took that guy right out. We leave the caves and emerge into whatever this place is called. But it's pretty. You did not expect to see me again, did you? Who are you again? My father is waiting to come. You should not keep my father waiting any longer. He expected you to come hours ago. So these two are Mankar Cameron's children, who we apparently killed at some point. But we've killed so many people on this run that it doesn't really narrow it down. So, to the palace. I have waited a long time for you, champion of old Tamriel. You've heard most of my brilliant scheme. Now I bet you want to know what drove me to this. Not really. I just need to know... The year was 2002. The place? Hollywood. My Tamriel dream was to Oblivion make it on the rejoined. silver screen. The mythic age reborn. Lord Dagon shall walk Tamriel again. The world shall be... Blah, blah, blah. Shut up and die. Rise from the ashes of the old. Lord Dagon will welcome... Lord Dagon will welcome your soul in oblivion! <laughs> And now that he's dead, we're going to nick all of his shit and get out of here. Well, we've made a right mess of the floor in this place. Oh, God, why are you all kneeling? Ah, Martin. You did it. You defeated him. You have the Amulet of Kings. Just put the bloody necklace on, man. Until we light the dragon fires, the gates are open and Mayroon's Dagon's invasion continues. In order to defeat Mehrun's Dagon, we need to light the dragon fires. So we're heading to the Imperial City to speak to the Elder Council. Bloody hell, this is a big place. I've been expecting you. Jesus! Scary bastard! Martin Septim, on behalf of the Elder Council, Chancellor I accept Ocado. your claim to the Imperial Chancellor throne. Ocado. Chancellor Ocado! The city is under attack. Oblivion gates have opened and Daedra are inside the walls. The guard is overwhelmed. And now the city's under attack. Here we are then. This is it. Bloody hell, these guys don't hang about, but they don't exactly do well in a fight. Oblivion gates are opening all over the city. The streets are full of Daedra and the weather's turned all hellish again. Take that, you fucker. Oh, Fucking hell, here comes the big boy himself. Dagon's here, and he doesn't look too happy about the size difference. We're too late. Mehrun's Dagon is here. Lighting the dragon fires will no longer save us. Looks like Martin's got a new friend. I have an idea. One last hope. I must reach the dragon fires and the Temple of the One. We need to make it to the Temple of the One, which is going to be interesting, seeing as we've got Dagon marching around the streets like a drunk bloke at a model village. We arrive at the temple, and Martin fulfills his duty as a Sean Bean character. I do what I must do. I cannot stay to rebuild Tamriel. That task falls to others. Farewell. 
You've been a good friend in the short time that I've known you. But now I must go. The dragon waits. Sacrificing himself, he turns into an avatar of Akatosh, defeating Dagon and saving Tamriel. Not bad for a priest who's only known about his origins for a week or so. Man done good. Martin is dead, but he died an emperor and a hero to rival Tiber Septim. I don't know what happens now. There are troubled times ahead for the Empire. Oh, I'll tell you what the future holds, Akato. The High Elves invade, the Empire gets absolutely cucked, the Nords get angry, and then the dragons come back. And if the threads of fate carry on down the right paths, there might just be another prisoner out there somewhere who's willing to save the world. Our journey is complete. From the Imperial Prison to the Arena, from Kavach to Cloud Ruler Temple, from the Gates of Oblivion to the Imperial City, we have saved Tamriel as a vampire. Obviously, we had to drink blood at one point, so we've not managed to do it wholly as a level 4 vampire, but we've still been a vampire for the whole thing. To be completely honest, there's not too much difference between doing it as a vampire and doing it normally. Aside from a couple of issues with NPCs not talking to us, or talking to us and then turning racist, as well as the issue of walking around during the day, there's not much difference between playthroughs. With all that said and done, yes, it is possible to complete the Elder Scrolls Oblivion as a vampire. And with that burning question answered, we can all sleep easier in our beds. Well, unless a vampire turns up anyway. Just one more thing. Once you've completed the main quest, a statue of your character appears in Bruma. We were fucking about with the console commands and we ended up bringing him to life. But he wouldn't talk to us, so we killed him. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the video, we really hope you enjoyed it. This one was a bit of a marathon, but ultimately it's been really fun to make. We've not played through Oblivion together in years, so it was great to revisit the game again. If there's enough demand for it, we might revisit Oblivion again at some point to do the individual guild quests as well as the DLCs as a vampire and see how that turns out. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a like, a comment or subscribe to the channel, it's greatly appreciated and we'll see you next time, if you've got time.